better than that. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I've already made the choice that I am going to rejoice and I am going to be glad in it. And it's uh, so wonderful to see you all today. I echo Brother Philip and his uh, sentiments as far as welcoming everybody to come and worship with us on this Palm Sunday. I uh, pray that you all have been blessed so far by the worship that's gone forth. I pray that, um, that the worship is ministered to you. I know it's definitely ministered to me. Amen. Amen. So I truly uh, thank God for that. And uh, we're just so excited just to be here. We want to welcome our first time guest who's here today. Um, thank him for being here with us. Uh, you know, it's amazing how, you know, people, you know, you've known for so many years. And then you see him later on down the line. And it's like, you know, I think I know this brother. Next thing you know, you do know him. So, man, you know, we just want to say, Kelvin, man, so good to see you, brother. Uh, just so good to have you uh, worshiping here uh, with us today. Um, and we're just so excited about the things that God is doing and um, just just to kind of shed light on some things um, that we have going on. Y'all do know this is Palm Sunday, right? Yes. All right. You know, next Sunday is what? It's Easter. It's Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. And the, you know the best time for unchurched people to go to church is on Resurrection Sunday. Y'all do know that, right? So what I want you all to do, I want y'all to do pastor a favor. And I, I sent you all um, a text last night uh, with the new postcard because what I don't want to do is I don't want to print out a whole bunch of cards and then they end up sitting in your car. And I know a lot of times people see a flyer, they'll throw it away and just do whatever. You know, and of course we'll do flyers for other things, but I want y'all to take that flyer I sent you via text and pass it to as many people as you can, because people might not remember a flyer, but you know, people are showing up looking at their phones. So I want y'all to uh, make sure you post it on social media. Some of you already done that. Um, make sure you all uh, just let people know next Sunday, not o'clock we'll be meeting right here for our resurrection sunday worship service and we're not gonna keep you in here all day either amen so uh, let's uh, invite as many people as possible to share with us on Resurrection Sunday. Now, we, we might not be doing Easter egg hunts or anything this year. Now, if the Lord bless us to do some things next year, then we'll, you know, we'll expand it. But for right now, we just, you know, just simple Resurrection Sunday worship, all right? All right. So, speaking of the resurrection, and we know it's Palm Sunday, uh, today we're going to just kind of shed light on something as we prepare to go into the Easter season. And I hope and pray that you have your Bibles, but even if you don't, uh, you might have your iPads, your iPhones, whatever device you have. Um, my scriptural reference for today is going to be coming from Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, and we're going to read verses 37 through 40. And what this is, this is, um, this is basically a snippet of the Palm Sunday, um, of, the, of the Palm Sunday story, uh, because there's so much that I could go into, but today I'm going to kind of, you know, come from a different angle today, because I want to look at uh, what's going on, first of all, here in the text, and we're going to shed some light on it, and we're going to shed how, uh, we're going to talk about how it affects us today. So I'm coming from Luke chapter 19, and I'm just going to read verses 37 through 40. And it reads, Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now, I'm going to use a very controversial um, topic for my message today. And I'm going to entitle this message, Turn Down for What? Turn down for what? That's what I'm going to talk about today. Turn down for what? 
Now, if we look uh, historically at Luke chapter 19, uh, we see that Jesus is almost at the twilight of his ministry here on earth. And uh, he's already performed many miracles and he's made tremendous impacts on the lives of the people that he touched. And in this particular passage of scripture, Jesus is preparing to enter into Jerusalem. And he sent two of his disciples to go and get a colt, which is a small horse that had never been used. And of course, you know, the disciples did what Jesus commanded him to do. And uh, in verse 37, the scripture says that the whole crowd of disciples was giving God praise for the mighty works they had seen through Jesus Christ. And we also see where not only were they giving God praise, this, this crowd over here was giving God praise, but they look at this other crowd. Well, we want to look at this other crowd and this other crowd had a little problem with the praise that was going on. So these Pharisees over here were trying to get Jesus to rebuke his disciples for their public display, the display of praise. However, when we look at verse 40, Jesus tells us something. He says something very interesting here. He says that if he tells the Pharisees, if this multitude keeps quiet, if they hold their peace, then the very stones or rocks would immediately cry out. And now let me tell us this before I even go any further. One thing we have to remember is that God, well, he will always be praised whether the saints praise him or not. And in this text, we see that Jesus refers to the rocks crying out. Now, it would be incredibly sad for a stone, a, a non living thing, a, a rock to give God praise while God's people sit silently. Now yes, we know that God created the rocks. He created every living and non-living things, but God created us as people specifically to give him praise. That is the unique thing God, you know, that he has done has done with us because if you notice um, now it, living creatures, and again God created, he created the waters, the sea and everything, but if you notice, living creatures have the unique ability to express ourselves vocally to God. Every living creature, even you know the animals, the birds, and 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 you know even when the trees kind of get to waving in the wind, you know that's a form of praise. God has given us as living creatures the opportunity and also the ability to give Him praise. That's what we cr were created to do. Now I want you to just tell yourself praise is what I was, what I was created to do say that praise is what I was created to do say it praise is what I was created to do so I want to look at three different things here in this text and I pray that it blesses you as we talk about turn down for what now the first thing we want to point out here is this the multitude had a reason to praise they had a reason to praise. Now, why were they praising? They were praising Christ because they believed that he had come to free them from the Roman oppression and rule. All of their burdens, shame, reproach, and misery was on the shoulders of this man that was riding that small horse. Now, although Jesus heard these praises, he was not misled or deceived by the shouts of the people. He knew they were praising him for many different reasons. And in a few days, the very same ones that were screaming and, and praising him and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, eventually in a couple of days, they'd be the same ones crying, crucify him. But on the other hand, some of the crowd had the right reasons to praise him. Regardless of what their reasons were, Jesus did not stop them. As a matter of fact, he accepted their praises as we see in verse 40. Now, the unique thing about this particular, um, this verse that we're talking about, these few verses that we're talking about here, is that Jesus, although he knew exactly, you know, what was going to happen, and he knew some of those same people that were uh, just singing his praises right then were going to eventually turn on them, he still just let them go on, and he still allowed them to praise. Now, always remember this, and we, when you talk about praise, and, it, and, and this is just kind of like just in a, in a regular, everyday uh, type situation. Now, always remember, everybody who 
sings your praises or says nice things about you or brags on you is not always in your corner. Always remember that. Everybody who says, oh, well, Yolanda's such a great person and she's such a hard worker and she does so much in the community and she does so much for, uh, you know, just for her family and for everybody she knows. I mean, you know, just, I mean, saying a whole bunch of great things. But I've discovered over the years that even though people might say those kind of nice things about you, guess what? They can eventually turn on you just like that. And that's something we got to always remember. And that's why I don't ever allow myself to get uh, caught up in people saying, oh, well, you know, Davis is such a great person. He's such a great pastor, great preacher, great teacher, because I've had so many people say those things about me. But watch this. As soon as God began to elevate me a little bit, their little tune started changing. If you ever want to know what people really think about you, watch how they treat you once God elevates you. Watch how they treat you once God begins to bless you. So I don't get caught up in stuff like that because, again, some of the same ones that might be patting you on the back one week, they're going to be behind you with a knife the next week getting ready to stab you. So always remember that. Now, but, but, it's, but let's go back to the text here. Because the question I want to raise to us today is, do we really have a reason to praise God? Better yet, what is our reason? Now, are we praising him because he's God? Or are we just trying to see what we can get from him? Because see, a lot of times people will speak well of something or someone because they're trying to see what they can get out of the deal. Oh, well, you know, I just, I, 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 I love this church so much. There are, so, there are some great people. There's a spirit of love in this ministry. Oh, I thank God for this church and for the pastor and for the leaders in the church. But then about a couple of weeks later, you find out, uh, Pastor, can I holler at you for a second? Uh, listen, I'm a little behind on my rent yeah you know you know i told a lot of people about your church you know some people supposed to be coming i, to I told them you know i told them y'all had a lot going on that you know y'all were changing the game out there in ridgemont I, I told them i told them what was going on now since i told them that i need you to do a little something for me you know can i get about six hundred dollars to help me pay my rent you know because uh brothers whoo, brother struggling right now you know but once again those were ulterior motives because yeah they're saying great things and they're 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 they're, they're actually speaking well of the ministry but what they're trying to do is they're trying to get their hands in something and see what they can get out of it but my question to you is why do you really praise God do you praise him because first of all he's God or or do you just praise him because you just want him to do something for you now we all want God to do something for us. Let's just be real. But just because we want God to do something for us, that ought not be our primary reason for giving praise. Man, let me tell y'all something. I praise God because he's God. There's even no old song that says, even if he never does anything else, he's already done enough. Now, don't get me wrong. I want God to do some more things for me, so I'm not going to sit up here and tell that lie just yet. But I'm willing, but I, I love God enough to say that Lord, even if you don't do anything else for me, even if you choose not to do anything else for me I'm going to praise you because simply because of who you are and secondly because you've already done enough in my personal experience and that alone is enough for me to bless your name so we have to uh, so 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 the multitude they had a reason they had a reason to praise God now watch this because not only did they have a reason to praise God, but the multitude praised God joyfully and with loud voices. They praised him joyfully and with loud voices. You see that? Let's go back to the text. Look at verse 37 and 38. It says, um, well, let me just go. Yeah, let me read that. It says, then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice. Watch this. And praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. So they praised him joyfully and with loud voices. Now, whenever we offer God praise, 
It ought to be a joyful and a loud praise. If you look back at Psalm 66 and verse 1, David says, Shout for joy to God all the earth. Isaiah 12 and 6 says, Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. We should have the same kind of joy when we open our mouths and give God praise. We, we, we should have that same kind of joy, that same kind of excitement, that same kind of enthusiasm whenever we open our mouths and give God praise. And this was an excellent opportunity for the multitude of disciples to offer God praise for the miraculous works they saw him do through Jesus. Now watch this, because let me raise this question. What miraculous works has God done in your life? You know, we see what he's done in the scripture. We see how he's healed the sick. We see how he's raised the dead. We see how he's opened blinded eyes. We've seen how he made the lame walk and the dumb talk. We've seen all of that. But the question is, what has God done in your personal experience? What has God done for you? You know that song, Janet Jackson, what have you done for me lately? What has God done for you lately? And I tell people all the time, you don't even have to think back years ago. You can just start thinking to first of all, about a couple of hours ago when you were able to get up out of your bed this morning. That's doing something for you. When you were able to get dressed and you weren't putting your, your, your socks on your hands and you weren't putting your gloves on your feet and you were in your right mind, you weren't, putting, you weren't walking around looking for your glasses and they were on your face. The fact, well, some of us did that, but I'm just saying. But you, if you just think back to that and you think about all the things that God has done for you just today. Yes. That's enough to rejoice and praise him with a loud voice. And I've discovered that, you know, I know people say all the time, you know, that there's a little cliche. Oh, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. I hate to disappoint y'all. Y'all know that's not in scripture, right? Amen. It's not in scripture. It's not. If you find it in there, you let me know where it is. I can go and research it. But over the years of study, I've done, I haven't seen it. See, because once again, that's what you call conditional praise. But see, see, my praise is going to go up whether the blessings come down or not. So we can't be so fooled into all that kind of foolishness right there. But if I'm going to praise him, I'm going to praise him joyfully. I'm going to praise him cheerfully. And I'm going to praise him with a loud voice. So if I'm going to, so when, when I'm offering God my praise, it has to be something that's joyful. I, if, if, I'm, if I'm a praise dancer, I can't get up there doing all my moves with a sad face I can't do all of that if I'm a praise and worship leader I can't get up here saying come on y'all lift your hands let's give God praise what a mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty God we serve what kind of praise is that oh God <laughs> no I can't I can't come into his presence like that because when I when I come into his presence and when I come and when I'm praising him when I magnify him I want it to be so exciting to the point that when people walk in the door or even before they walk in the door they wonder what in the world is going on in there I got to get me some of that and when they walk through the door and they see the praise going on they hear the Holy Ghost praise party going on then everybody's ready to celebrate and be excited why because we're praising the wonderful and matchless name of God so I'm excited when I praise him I praise him cheerfully and I praise him with a loud voice but watch this because not only did the multitude have a reason to praise and not only did they praise him joyfully with a loud voice but watch this this is going to bless somebody right here y'all ready for this one watch this the multitude did not allow the crowd to phase them oh boy I'm going to have to stay on that for a minute I'm going to let that sink in for a minute the multitude did not allow the crowd to phase them. We see that in verses 39 through 40. Uh, now watch this because why well, says the Pharisees, some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, teacher, rebuke your disciples. That's what they wanted him to do. But watch how Jesus came back on him. He came back and said, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. So what Jesus was saying in essence was, leave them alone. 
Just leave them alone. Let them do what they're doing. And one thing that we have to realize is that no matter how, when, or where we praise God, there's always going to be a crowd that's going to judge or they're going to hate on your praise. Let me say it again. No matter what we do, no matter how we praise, no matter how we express ourselves, there's always going to be a crowd that's going to judge or hate your praise. And watch this. I'm not just talking about the crowd on the outside. <laughs> I'm talking about some of the folks on the inside. Y'all do know it's some Pharisees up in the church. Y'all know that, right? Y'all do know it's some Pharisees in the church that try to hate on your praise. You do know that it's some folks that, you know, sit right there in God's house and look at you lifting your hands and look at you praising and magnifying God. And they got something to say. They rolling their eyes at you. They whispering behind your back. Look at that. I don't know why they praise. All them issues they got going on. Why in the world they praise? She got all that baby baby daddy drama. She ought to be ashamed of her. He got all them ba He got seven babies and eight baby mamas. And he got the nerve up to still be trying to praise God. Man, please. Man, what they got going on? In the church. It, it happens. Yeah, yeah. There, there's always going to be a crowd that thinks that high praise is out of order. And you know, there's always going to be a crowd that thinks that shouting and, and dancing is out of order. There's always going to be a crowd that thinks that running is out of order. There's going to always be a crowd that thinks that music is too loud or that the preacher is too loud or the, the soloist is too loud. The deacon prays too loud. The praise team sings too long. You know, they, oh, you know, you, oh, we stand too long. Why are we standing for 15, 20 minutes? You know, I, I'm just getting all tired. Yeah, you'll stand for 15, 20 minutes, you know, out there at the carnival waiting to get on a ride that you're scared of, but yet you can't stand for 10 minutes in the house of God? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know how I got off on that. <laughs> always a crowd. Let me come back. Always a crowd that always just, they, they, they want to hate on you and they say it doesn't take all that. Baby, let me tell you something. It might not take all that for you, but for me it takes all that and then some. Because when I begin to think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I can't help but let a hallelujah come out and be stirred up in my spirit. So I can't worry about the crowd. The crowd can't do nothing for me. Turn down for what? Yeah. Always want, oh, you know, I, I never shall forget, you know. And, and let me tell you young folks something. You know, and because I've experienced this over the years. You know, let me tell y'all something. This ain't no, uh, just an adult message right here. Let me tell y'all young folks something. If God has blessed you and you want to give him praise for it, guess what? That's fine. Yeah. Don't you sit up there and let somebody tell you, oh, child, you know, that baby don't know what she's talking about. What that, that baby ain't got no business praising all that. She lived with her mama. You know, she humped up all her parents. Her parents pay, pay their bills and all the kind of stuff. You, let me tell you something. This ain't like the old days where everything was just all hunky-dory. No, no, no. Nowadays, children, teenagers go through things just like adults do. You know, because when we look working in the school system and you see some of the things and you hear some of the things that some of these children go through that you never had to go through as a child, you wouldn't understand that. You know, when, when, when children have to go home to abusive parents, that's going through something. When children have to go home and don't know where their next meal is coming from, that's something to deal with. When the only hot meal the kids get is at school, that's an issue right there. And those, that, those children are really going through something. So you don't know what kind of hell they went through at that house. Yeah. You don't know. They might be getting ready to be placed in a foster home. And you bring them to the house of God. And they're crying and they're lifting their hands simply because they're grateful that they've had an experience to, with God and an encounter with God. And we have the nerve enough to try to judge them and tell them they're too young to know what they're doing. They're too young to know what they're talking about. No, baby. They got some issues. Yeah. That's why you cannot be moved by the crowd. You tell somebody, beware of the crowd. Beware of the crowd. Beware of the crowd. You see, see, and see, let me tell you something. See, that's why this is what I call a, we are a, 
I'm trying to say this right. We are more of a free spirited kind of church. I say it like that. And you can praise God whatever, however you want to praise him here at this church. We welcome it. If you want to lift your hands, that's fine. If you want to holler, if you want to run, if you want to dance, if you want to speak in tongues, guess what? I don't have a problem with that because that is your way of expressing Christ. Just keep everything in order because, you know, now you can't just jump up and holler and start speaking in tongues while I'm teaching the Bible. Can't do that because we're going to have Brother Philip and some of our uh, brother, you know, have Brother Kelvin back there. Have your head and escort y'all out of here. You, hey, you got to go. You can't stay here with that. You know, there, there's a time and a place for everything. But when praise is going on, you know, and that's why, and y'all don't get me wrong, you know, I grew up in the Baptist church, the traditional Baptist church. That's why I kind of really don't like a whole bunch of ushers hovering around folks when they shouting. Right. I really don't like that because what you're doing, you know, yeah, I can understand. You just want to make sure they kind of stay, you know, in a certain area, you know, make sure, you know, no windows get broken or anything. I, I understand that. But but as far as trying to hold them down and pack them out and all that kind of, what you packing them out for? I heard one preacher say one time, don't pack out the folk who's shouting. What y'all can do is pack out some of these folk who ain't shouting. That's who you can pack out. <laughs> you know, I, I love it. I love to see people go forth and praise. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I have a 25 plus year music ministry experience. Praise and worship, that's my thing. I love it. Yeah. Right. I love to see people going forth or whatever. And we're not going to stop you from just doing you. We're not going to tell you to turn down. You know, if, you know, sometimes the spirit might get so high and the glory cloud is so thick that I might be, I might stand up here getting ready to preach and can't even preach because the atmosphere is just so thick and it's so full. I would be a fool if I try to stop the flow of God trying to open up my little Bible and preach a little message. You know, yeah, all right, come on, y'all. Amen, amen, y'all. All right, everybody quiet down, y'all quiet down. Rev got to preach this message. Y'all quiet down. Y'all can shout later. Y'all gonna shout later. No, 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 that'd be crazy because guess what? God can minister through the praise a whole lot better than I could minister through trying to preach my little Easter speech up here. If that's what he wants to do. Now, so, but again, you have, once again, you have to obey the floor of the Spirit. Because I want to ask y'all something right here. Because well, well, let me let me back up before I ask y'all this question. Because we got to remember, we got to remember that when it comes to the judge, when somebody tries to judge your praise, and when someone tries to to, to hate on your praise, you know, usually a lot of times they might be hating on yours because they can't get it for themselves. Always remember that they might be hating on you getting happy and rejoicing in the Lord because, you know, maybe, you know, there's some things you need from God or some things you've already received from God that they haven't necessarily received. So you got to be watchful for that. So don't don't worry about the crowd. So so, you know, don't don't even, don't even worry about it. Because if you think about it, see, the crowd didn't wake you up this morning. Mm -mm. The, see, the, the crowd didn't make sure that you were in your right mind. The crowd did not go to the cross and die for you and be resurrected for you. No, that's not what happens. So, so what you do is the next time somebody tries to judge your praise or tries to hate on your praise, what you do is you tell them, baby, let me tell you something. See, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. So, But if you got some time, I can sit down and I can tell you a little bit and maybe we can rejoice together. But instead of you trying to hate on my praise, what you need to do is get in on this and you need to try to get what I got right now. Can you say amen today? Amen. amen. So, so we see that the what? The multitude praised God joyfully. Well now first of all they had a reason to praise. They praised him joyfully and they did not allow the crowd to hinder or stop their praise. Now let me go on and close this thing out because what we have to remember today is that God is worthy to be praised. That there's even a song that says, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. And I don't know how you feel about it, but uh, I've made up in my mind after I've read this and after I've studied this, that I'm not going to allow anybody to make me turn down. So the next time I'm rejoicing and I'm praising and somebody tell me, brother, you have to tone that down a little bit. I'm ask him turn down for what <laughs> yeah the next time if I'm on a 
musical instrument and I'm playing and the spirit is high and we're rejoicing and some somebody walk over to me or send a note to tell me, uh, brother, can you turn that down a little bit? I'm going to say turn down for what? See, because let me tell y'all something. See, I don't know about you, but, but God has been good to me. And because God has been good to me, this is the way I express him. So I'm not turning down for you or anybody else because, see, I know what my God means to me. And I know what my God has done for me. And because God has been so good to me and because I was created to do this, I'm going to go on and give him praise because I don't ever recall uh, when when Jesus, you know, first of all, Jesus says that the rocks will cry out if these hold their peace. But I don't ever recall Jesus dying for a rock. And I don't ever recall Jesus healing a rock or delivering a rock or setting a rock free from the hand of the enemy. So because I have all of the human qualities, because I can move my hands, I'm going to go on and lift them up. Because I can open my mouth and praise him, I'm going to go and open my mouth and praise him. Because I got these feet right here, and if I want to dance a little bit, I'm going to go on and dancing because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me and when I begin to think of his goodness and all that he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah yes. So I'm going to bless his name. I'm, I'm not turning down, baby. I'm turning up. And that's what I want to encourage y'all today. Let me tell y'all something. Don't turn down, baby. Turn up. Turn up. Look at somebody and tell them, turn up. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them, turn up. Amen. If God's been good to you, you ought to turn up. If God saved you, you ought to turn up. If God delivered you, you ought to turn up. If God brought you out of something, you ought to turn up. Yeah. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm finished with this message. Now, next Sunday, if the Lord say the same, we're going to talk more about the resurrection. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to really just dive deep into it and we're going to minister on that. And I promise you, it's going to bless you. It's going to bless you real, real, real good. Amen? Amen. Amen. I promise y'all it is. But uh, what I want to do right now is I want to take this opportunity and this moment to, to extend the invitation.